Okay. Um, in one of the previous cabinet videos that I did, I talked about this concept of a story stick or a story pole. And basically, that is an old term that carpenters used to use. And all a story stick is, it could be, it's usually a thinner stick, but it literally used to be a stick. And you would put it against something, and then you would take your pencil, which of course, you know, I don't have, but I do have my silver Sharpie. Um, so you would take it and you'd go, okay, this is the location I want the end of a cabinet to come. There's going to be a space here. Um, and then I want another cabinet here, and so on and so on, all the way down the road. And a lot of cabinet makers would make these story poles, you know, to know where the positioning of the cabinet is. Another way you can use a story pole is, hey, you know, I'm doing some electrical conduit in a basement or in a room. I know that I want the center of the box to be here, then I want the light switch to be up here. Okay, imagine the light switch is further up. But you get the idea. It just tells a story about what's going where and how to line everything up and the measuring and distances of things that you can use. So um, in the cabinet video, I did this for um, for the, uh, I think it was for the, the hinges or whatever, the drawer slides. Um, but in any case, I wanted to point out something. So on this job, um, it's, it's an interesting job because everything has to be made here in the shop. There's nothing that I'm going to go and do on site except for install. And the, this is a 15 foot long piece of steel that I have here and that's going to go across the opening. So the, the steel was to go all the way across the one wall of this room. The doors will hang on it and they'll be able to move you know, all over the place if they want them to. So I've got to still cut this down to size. It's a 16 foot piece right now. I need to take a foot off of one end. But then, you know, I, I can't go up, back up to the job site and then measure all the studs and then hope I got everything right. So that, that's in other words why we use story sticks or story poles is because, you know, they're going to be right on. You're holding a piece of wood up against something and then you're measuring and marking and mark so you have the distances with you they're not on some sheet of paper you're going to lose or whatever so but you know i don't want to be toting around a 15 foot stick either because that's just like well it's not as heavy but it's like toting around the piece of steel it's too long i don't want to carry it in the truck you know blah 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 blah, blah. so if you're doing something similar where you have a long um, open space of use of and requiring a um, let's say you're doing outlets in a room and you want them to be every four feet you know and you want to use a story stick or a story pole I can never make up my mind which whichever way I want to say it but in any case what I did was I just took some <laughs> klutz classes I just took some um, uh, drywall tape and the drywall tape is two inches which just happens to be the width of our steel and what I did is, I on the wall at the job location, I taped it up against the wall. You can see where the blue tape is here that I just wrapped around it. And I taped it all the way down that 15 foot wall. And then what, you, what I did was, and I know it's gonna be hard to tell, hard to see maybe a little bit on this, is here I've got the letter R and an arrow. So this tells me that this goes on the very most right edge of the, um, of the piece of steel and then all along this I've marked centers where the studs are so I've got one two three this thing's getting all twisty so I got one um, two a third one here sorry it's kind of all over the place um, but this is my third stud and then I marked the opening so obviously since it's an opening there's going to be a stud right next to the opening but now on the other end of that I have the other opening um, the placement of where these studs are, um, and, th and that's where I'm going to have to drill the holes. Another one, and then this is the end. I didn't want to take it off the spool, so this is the end. So all I have to do now is, instead of getting all these tape measures and stuff out, I'm just going to lay out this piece of paper, this spool of paper, on the um, piece of steel, and I'm just going to mark on the piece of steel and transfer my marks over. It's just a very, kind of a handy thing to do. Um, it's a little trip, trick or whatever tip you want if you could do that. Just, you know, it's kind of thinking outside the box. Um, it's just kind of using something that you already have to make something else a little bit easier. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead now and i got to get the Whitney Punch 
the hole puncher you know back up and I'm going to punch a bunch of 3 8 inch holes into this sucker and just to make sure um, if you're looking at this piece of paper which you're not but I am um, I'm going to put this up on sketch uh, sketch up video to adjust it so I'm going to have to drill these holes roughly three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. Remember I said that they can't be directly in the center because if they are, then the, the washer that's around the spacer bushing that we have is going to interfere with the roll of the, the pulley wheels when the doors are moving across this thing. So it's little you know subtleties like that that you have to take into account. And so um, the next time uh, I'll put this up on, on um, YouTube, like I said. I'll, I'll shoot a quick video update of this and explain what's going on there. Uh, and then after I punch these holes, the only thing left then is to paint. And uh, we're going to paint everything. We're going to paint the wheels. They're going to be a nice black. But I want to show you a few things first and um, a couple of things that you might not know about painting metal. So, uh, And there are things that I learned that I had a, a, a welder... Uh, a friend of mine tell me that I didn't know way back when. So, you know, they're good things to, to get across and to, to learn. So, in any case, uh, I'm going to get to punching these and then we'll come back and we'll talk about painting. I just wanted to talk before we get into the actual painting and cleaning of this stuff, I just kind of wanted to talk about um, the hardware and the setup because this is where it gets tricky. Like a lot of people, they'll make lists of stuff and all that, but they won't explain the why behind why you're using a particular thing and and I always as you know with my videos I talk a lot because I want you to understand why it is you're doing something not just to do it in quick two minutes so anyway um, as I said before to put the wheel hardware together um, that's gonna hold up this brace which is gonna hold up the doors um, I'm using these three inch screws uh, and they're five eighths of an inch in diameter just like the hole um, I think I mentioned this in an earlier video that these things are, um, you can see that the, the, there's no, I don't know if you can see from there, but there's no threads all the way up. So the threads go about two thirds of the way up and then they stop and then there's just a solid shoulder. And that's what I want for this because like I said, you know, there's a lot of play and wobble if you're just talking about the threads, but as you get closer into the middle of that, the wobble gets less. Um, as the solid portion, uh, the solid portion is just a little bit bigger maybe than the, than the actual threads, but not by much. So it just slides in there and it fits perfectly. Now, um, the way these things, these wheels are laid out, um, there's like a little rubber gasket in here and then there's a bearings, their bearings are in this like slightly bulgy part right here that you can see. Um, and this little piece here spins inside um, the actual wheel and so we want to make sure though that you know we're going to not make it so it's not able to spin plus you know if I just put the screw through the plate and onto the thing it's going to end up like that and it's not going to turn because um, you know it's inside the wheel well now so I have to hold it off somewhat like that and in order to do that I've got I I've determined that I need four of these. Now you can get uh, try to find a spacer for these, but it's just easier to get um, four washers. Now these are metric washers. So the difference between the metric washer and at least that I found, the, the difference, I'm not a mechanical metal fastener guy, but what I found is the metric washers have a um, narrower ring. Um, and what I mean by that is the, the distance between the edge of the hole and the outside edge um, or the radius of the hole and the radius of the outside edge is narrower than it would be in a regular screw so, or I mean a regular washer. So these metric washers come in like M6, M4, M8, M12, you know, they come in those variances as opposed to 5 eighths and those M's count, you know, um, correspond somehow to the millimeters that are involved with metric uh, measurements or whatever. So that's the reason I got the metric washer is because they fit just inside that hole or just inside the um, uh, this metal part which uh, houses the bearings and there's a small gap between 
um, the actual inner housing, and, uh, the edge of the washer rather, and this inside ring of the housing. I know it's like a little bit difficult to see, but you'll see how it all goes together. Um, and if you get this stuff and you follow along with what we're doing in the video, then you'll definitely see it. But I've, I've determined that four is the right number, and I'm gonna put a washer on outside of this, by the way. So let's put these guys up and in. So now what we have here is we have, you know, the, the screw head and then there's a gap between that. So there's about a, I don't know, it's about maybe 3 16 of a gap, something like that. Yeah, about 3 16 inch of a gap. And that's about what we want. Any smaller than that, like if I took one of these washers away and I played with it, I'm just a little nervous that with all the weight being dispersed everywhere, hanging these doors, I'm afraid that it's just not, it might rub or something like that. So just get the extra washer you know, four washers as opposed to three. Now, so now we know that this thing spins pretty well on the top, no problem. Um, and then on the back, uh, there's a different kind of metric washer. It's slightly smaller. So it's got a, a, a narrower, an, an even narrower distance between the inner radius and the outer radius. So the outer radius is smaller than the outer radius on these other metric washers. Again, just a different size. And the reason that is, is because I just want to provide a little padding between uh, the nut that I'm going to put on here and um, the inner ring that turns of the bearing housing. So if I now throw that on there and I tighten it up just by hand for right now, I still see that I get a nice smooth spin. Okay. So that's why we're putting all these washers and spacers in there is just to get this hardware. And by the way, these are going to be mounted on the front of the door. So the distance between here and the, um, and the center of the wheel is just under three quarters of an inch, which will be just about at the middle width of the door. And that's kind of what you want. You want the middle width hanging under the middle of the pulley so that everything's centered and your doors aren't going to do this or that or, you know, whatever. Okay. Then what goes on, we'll bolt these things together, and I'll talk about that when we do that. We'll bolt these to the door with um, similar screws. Now, you'll notice that this screw is a little bit long, okay? Because the shorter the screw, the shorter the shoulder. And I wanted a longer shoulder, but a shorter screw so, um, that goes through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my, ooh, probably not a silver sharpie at this point, but a... Uh, I don't even have a pencil nearby, but what I'm going to do is just make a mark here and then I'm going to cut the end of the screw off. And that's so that, you know, it, because if this long, it'll interfere with the back. It'll, I don't even think it'll fit, but if, in worst case, it'll just scratch up the board, you know, that's in the back. So I'm going to want to cut that off, leaving about a thread, a thread or two's width is fine away from the back of the nut. So then this will be fine. So I'll do that. And then, um, as I said, we're going to take these um, uh, inch and three quarter screws and we're going to put those through and I'll put a washer here too. Um, we'll put an inch and, a, inch and a quarter screw here or inch and three quarters on each one of these. These will go through the recessed in the back of the door like I showed you we drilled out in the last segment. Um, and then the only thing that that then that remains then is the actual um, 3 8 by 5 inch screws that go um, through the uh, the long and I don't know if you can see this but this is like this 15 foot long piece of steel here um, they're gonna go you know through those holes basically um, and they're gonna take a little wiggling to get through but we'll get through them we're gonna go through those holes and into um, the board. Now, the board has to be, we have to have some space between the board and, um, we have to have some space between the, the rail and the board. And the way we're going to do that is, if this were the board, for example, uh, no, if this were the rail that was going up against the wall and the board's back here, you know, we, we want to put a spacer on these 3 8 inch. So what I, all I have here is a couple of three, eighth, three eighths of an inch washers, or they will be three and an eighth. I think these are half actually. And then I've got a three eighths inch spacer bushing.
between that. And then that will allow the space between the rail and the wall such that the wheel will then flow perfectly without interfering with the wall or the board on the wall. In your case, it might be a wall. We had to install an extra board. Okay, so that will allow everything to, to flow very nicely. And I'll talk again about the spacers when we actually install this metal piece.